one. Boom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a great conversation today with uh, a special guest. And we're going to be talking about digital marketing experts who master the art of CEO and data analysis. So let's get this one started. Here we go. Shut Shut up up and sit sit down. down. Look, a business can give you everything you want in life. Prestige, wealth, freedom. It can also take everything away from you. This show is for those who are willing to take that risk. These are the real life stories of entrepreneurs. But before we start, I have one small favor to ask. Please leave a comment. It can be advice, critiques, tips, feedback, or share this with someone because your engagement is the most valuable and most powerful form of social currency. So thank you. And welcome to another episode of Business Plus. All right, let me make a correction. We're not talking about data analysis. We're talking about storytelling, ladies and gentlemen. That was my bad, my bad. All right, so today we got a remarkable guest who's on a mission to help entrepreneurs and business leaders become exceptional storytellers. So get ready for a deep dive into the world of strategic storytelling and communication. In this episode, he's going to unveil his proven four-step strategic storytelling method known as COSA, C-O-S-A, and he's going to share how uh, it transformed the communication skills of professionals of like global giants like PepsiCo, MasterCard, and more. So let's welcome to the show, Mr. Cesar Castro. All right, Cesar, let's do this thing, man. You welcome to the show. I'm pumped. I'm pumped with all the music, with the way you presented. I'm just super excited to be on here on the show. Well, let's do this, man. First question I always ask is that everybody who comes on the show is here to promote something, to talk about what it is that they do, to get their message out, to sell their product or service. What is that for you? For me, it's really simple. I am convinced and I I have passion for helping other people become great, great storytellers because I believe we can be better leaders, better entrepreneurs, better communicators if we become great storytellers. So I'm on that mission of just communicating to the world the importance that we all have to become better storytellers. And then obviously, if someone wants to become a better storyteller, then I also have certain methods and things to help them. But my main core conviction is just that the world will be better if we become better storytellers. I heard something a long time ago, one of the earlier episodes that I ever did. By the way, you're episode 1291. So I've been doing this for a while, but very early on, somebody told me that facts tell, but stories sell. We as human beings tend to be emotional creatures. We buy everything on emotion and then we logically try to justify it. And yeah. that story that's told by whoever is selling a product or service, the better the story, the more likely it is someone is going to buy. So let me ask you, who is a perfect audience, the target audience, that perfect client of yours that wants to learn how to tell stories? My perfect audience, the one that I usually work with are business leaders, whether they be already in the corporate world and they're in leadership positions. One of the things that you start learning as you start moving up the corporate ladder, for example, is that the higher you get, the more important your communication skills become. There's actually studies that have been done through the Harvard Business Review that show that about 80 to 90% of what a leader does in his day-to-day is, is related to communication. And a lot of that communication is public communication, you know, public speaking or interpersonal communication, or now you know, digital communication. But, but everything we do is communication. So I always tell leaders, I'm like, look, if, if, if you were reading your job description and it said that 80, 90% of your job will be to communicate, you better be really good at that, <laughs> right? And, and, and myself as an entrepreneur, you know, I have my, my, my training and consulting business. One of the things that has helped me the most to, to be able to move forward and work with these big you know, corporate giants is the fact that I know how to tell good stories. So I always tell entrepreneurs as well, the best way to differentiate yourself and to get your message to really stick in people's mind and their hearts is by knowing how to tell a good story. And usually in the business world, the, the, the businesses that can tell the best stories are the ones that usually win. 
All right, what about those four steps? Because I know there's somebody out there who's like, look, I want to be a good storyteller, but for some reason, when I start telling a story, I start with the punchline, and then I got to <laughs> backtrack, and then it never comes out right. Yeah. How do I get to the point where I can just confidently come in, tell a story, and really engage my audience, keep them in into whatever it is that I'm talking about, or maybe even persuade them to go in a certain direction? Yeah, so... When it comes to storytelling, like if someone was to Google right now how to tell a story, they would probably find a lot of different <laughs> methods and, and different steps. You know, the most famous or, or the most iconic one that a lot of people use is the hero's journey, which is actually 21 steps to tell a good story. So the, the original, the original father of that methodology, he was more into the world of movies. So it makes sense, obviously, if you're telling a two hour story, 21 steps. But in my case, since I'm working more in the business world, I can't go up to a, a manager in an organization and be like, look, I'm going to teach you 21 steps so you can tell a good story. <laughs> the moment yeah, I say, where the door is at that moment. Yeah, yeah, they'll be like, you know what? I don't have time for that. So what I've done through the years, and since I've been doing this uh, teaching storytelling now for about eight years, is I've been simplifying the process uh, to four steps because I think that anyone, you know, when you go up to someone and be like, look, in four steps, you can create a good strategic story. Most people are like, yeah, give me, give me that, that four step. Now, I do want to differentiate something very important here before I get into the, the four step method. There is a difference between just storytelling and what I do, which is called strategic storytelling. So, so storytelling is the art of communication through stories, right? And that's something that we actually all do. Uh, we as humans are storytelling creatures and we've been telling stories for over a hundred thousand years. So most people, if, if you, you know, get them on the weekend <laughs> with a good cup of wine or good beer, they'll, they'll tell pretty good stories, you know, in the backyard with the friends. Right. And, and most people, and, and the way that we as human beings communicate usually is by telling stories. We're, we're not just speaking facts or we don't get home at night. And, and when our kids ask us, what did you do today? We don't pull out the PowerPoint presentation and start giving them <laughs> <laughs> right? We usually tell a story. And that is just because we as human beings understand the world and we try to communicate our world through stories. So storytelling is the art of doing that. And, and most people in some way or another can do it. Now, strategic storytelling, which is what I teach, is what I call the art of influence. Because it's not just telling stories to communicate. It's telling stories as a strategic vehicle to make sure that your message or your idea that you're trying to get across to your team, to your customer, to your market hits, right? It impacts and creates change. So strategic storytelling is all about learning how to use stories that can ultimately generate some kind of change, whether that be in people's perceptions, people's feelings, or people's actions. And, and that is what I, I usually teach. So I always tell my clients, like, I'm not just going to teach you how to tell stories because you probably already know how to do that. I'm going to teach you how to create strategic stories. So that way you can make sure that your idea or your message really hits home when you're trying to influence someone to change actions, behaviors, feelings. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and before we get into those four steps, I, I, I totally agree with you. I've always see, I've always learned that whenever somebody's talking to a prospective client and you hear no, right. The objection, no, Usually it's not the N-O that you're really having an issue with. It's that the other no, K-N-W-O, that they didn't know enough information. And I think a yeah. good story here, a strategic story, will give them a new perspective, another idea, something they didn't quite see the first time that might change that no to a yes simply by having a strategy. So hit me with yeah. it. Four steps that I can help <laughs> me change that no into a yes. All right. So – the reason why I, I, and you read it, you talked about that at the beginning, the, the method is called COSA, all right? It's because I originally taught this in Latin America. I'm, I'm from Chile. That's where I was born, in Latin America. And it's where I've been the last 20 years of my life. I grew up in the States, but, but I went back to Chile and fell in love with a beautiful Chilean woman and, and ended up staying there for a long time. And then I've been back about two years here in the States. So when I teach this method in Latin America, I, I, I say, this is... La cosa más importante, or this is the most important thing, because cosa means thing in Spanish, that I'm going to teach you so you can create a strategic story. Now, at the same time, I'm being strategic and pedagogical, because when you remember the word cosa, you'll remember the four steps so you can create an effective story. The great thing is that those four steps can also be translated into English, and it also comes out with the word cosa. So 
the first step to be able to create a good strategic story, every strategic story starts out with what's called the context, okay? The context. Now, context is still kind of a, you know, what is that? But really context is three questions that we have to answer at the beginning of our story. Where did it happen? When did it happen? And who did it happen to? Right? And all stories, and, and especially business stories, think about they all start like that, right? We don't say once upon a time, like we, you know, with, with, with stories when we were kids, but we do say, hey, you know what? Like two weeks ago, right? I was in my office and I was talking to a member of my team. Did you, did you notice what I just did? I just answered the three questions. You told me where, you told me when, and you told me who. Exactly. That is the context. And it's really important for us to always, when we start a story, create a context because it allows your audience to start imagining, right? And start going into the story with you. Now, the objective, and this is crucial, every, every step or every stage of the four-step process has an objective, has a goal, a purpose. The objective in the context is to create connection. What you want is your audience to connect quickly with the story. And usually people connect quickly when you're able to take them to a place uh, or, or sometime, or specifically when you're able to introduce characters into your story that people will resonate with. So we're always thinking, right, when you're creating a story, who your audience is, because you want to make sure that the characters that you have and that you're introducing in the context of your story are able to connect really quickly with the audience. All right. So for example, if I'm speaking to entrepreneurs, right, I would tell a story about, and if it's a personal story, I would tell a story about, hey, you know what? Uh, 10 years ago, I, I was in the corporate world and I decided to, to become an entrepreneur, just like you. And the moment I do that, the moment I say entrepreneur, all the entrepreneurs that are listening are, oh, what? Yeah. Because in a way, what you're really doing is you're telling their story through yours. And, and this is something that actually hit me pretty hard when I understood it. And it's based on a psychological principle that people don't really want to listen to your story just because they want to listen to your story, right? Maybe your mom and dad want to listen to your story because they love you. But the rest of the people, your customers, even your team, what they really want to do is listen to your story because they want to hear their own story through yours. Mm. Does that make sense? That totally makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we, we do yes. that subconsciously anyways, right? Uh, there's some awkward thing and I'm like, I'm at, can I ask you a question? It's not about me. Yeah, let me ask you for a friend, right? Like we kind of always want to do that uh, on our own pace anyway. So context, where, when, who, and the whole goal is to make connection. Exactly. So once we're, once we're able to do that, so that's the goal, right? In the, in the first stage is to create that connection with the audience. Now we move on to the second step which is the obstacle, the obstacle. So this is, if we're looking at it like a three course meal, this is, the, this is the main plate of any story. There has to be some kind of an obstacle. And when I say obstacle, I mean, you know, a conflict, a difficulty, some kind of challenge, failure. The, 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 the main character of the story, if you're the main character, no problem. But if the main character of the story does not go through any kind of struggle, doesn't face any kind of obstacle, it's really not worth telling, right? Mm -hmm. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I've seen, even entrepreneurs, especially in the business world, you know, leaders make this is they're telling a story and they try to avoid the conflict because they don't want to feel vulnerable. Does that make sense? Usually oh. when you go into the obstacle, especially if it's your story, you're going to have to show vulnerability for that story to have some kind of credibility. So if I'm telling you a story about when I started my, my, my business 10 years ago, if I just say, you know, 10 years ago, I decided to leave the corporate world and started my own, my own consulting company. And you know what? Ever since then, I've been super successful and it's great and it, it's super easy. And if I did that, first of all, you probably anything. wouldn't believe me very much, right? Yeah. And second, it doesn't create any kind of emotion because it actually kind of sets us apart because you're listening to me saying, oh, I'm not like that. <laughs> That's not my story. Because we all know as entrepreneurs that every single entrepreneur that starts a business has their ups and downs. So I would focus more, especially after I tell you that I, you know, 10 years ago, I started my business. I would be like, and you know what? My first year, I didn't have any clients. Mm. I was knocking doors. I was going to meetings. But since no one knew me and I didn't know how to differentiate myself, no one was calling me back for a second meeting. Now, when I do that, right, there's an obstacle. I'm being vulnerable by sharing that, that difficulty I had. Now you're much more connected and invested emotionally in the story that I'm telling. 
Because the purpose, remember I told you each stage has a purpose? The purpose of the obstacle is to create or generate emotion. That's it. You want people to feel emotions. You want them to feel a little bit of sadness or stress or anger because if people don't feel anything, it's really hard for them to just connect and invest emotionally in your story and want to listen to the rest of the story. Mm. So this is, again, one of the biggest mistakes I've seen that entrepreneurs make, leaders make when they're telling stories. They, they try to jump this, this, this part, which is such a fundamental and just key part of any story because they don't want to go into the vulnerability of it of talking about maybe they failed. Maybe they, you know, at first they weren't very good. Mm. They don't want to talk about that. So they just want to go directly to the success. And any story without, and this is this is what I believe, any story without a good conflict is not even worth telling. Now you are so true. Everything you're talking about right now, everything from how to lay out the context to sharing that vulnerable moment. I'm starting to think about the post that I do every single morning and I'm like, you know what? I skip that obstacle often. <laughs> uh, maybe it's, I don't want to look weak. I don't want to look like I made a mistake. Uh, yeah. I don't want to look imperfect, but that's how we all are, right? Exactly. That, that's exactly where that emotional connection comes from, that vulnerability, right? So, What's S? So remember, remember this principle vulnerability breeds credibility. Mm. Vulnerability breeds credibility. People are much more credible when they're able to be vulnerable because when people show vulnerability, it connects us and it shows honesty, right? And, and we see this like all the time, even in politics, I'm not going to go into that, but we see a lot of times politicians get up and they just talk about how everything is so great and so awesome. And they lose credibility, right? People listen to them like, ah, they're lying. They're not telling yeah. the truth. So anything they say after that, we're not paying attention anymore. When leaders, when entrepreneurs are able to show vulnerability and vulnerability, understand vulnerability in the psychological sense, which means being vulnerable is the ability to show honestly the emotions that you're feeling. That is vulnerability. Society has made us believe that vulnerability is weakness, vulnerability is, 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 is being poor, right? But the true definition of vulnerability, which comes from psychology, I, I'm a psychologist, so this is, these are things that I studied you know, when I was even at the university. Vulnerability is the ability to express or show our emotions. Mm. That is us being vulnerable. And when we do that, we become much more credible. 100%. All right. right, so what is the S? So the we third, got context. Third step, right? we got we're, almost, we're halfway there. The third step, now the third step is the solution. Mm. The S, the solution. And this is what we know as the happy ending. You know, every, every story, every movie, every series we watch, every book, there's something that's already hardwired in our brain that tells us there's got to be a happy ending to this. Right? The main character might be going through a lot of struggle, through a lot of difficulty. I always think of James Bond movies. There's always a point in a James Bond movie where you literally think like, how is he going to get out of this? Like they throw him in a pool full of sharks and piranhas. How is he going to get out? And we obviously feel emotion. We feel nervousness, but there's something in our subconscious that is like, okay, but he'll get out of it. James Bond's not going to die, right? Because we're always seeking and we know that no matter what the struggle is, there's going to be some kind of a happy ending. Mm -hmm. Now in stories, especially oral stories that we tell, Happy endings happen in two ways. One is literally because the, the character, the main character finds a solution and is able to solve the problem, whatever that problem might be, okay? Or second, they might not solve the problem, but they'll learn something from the situation that they're going through. So I've, I've had people that tell me, look, I have a story, it's really good, but, but there's no like solution to it. I, I messed up with a client and we lost a client and, and, and we lost, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. And really there's no happy ending to it. I always ask him, okay, looking back at it now, did you learn something from that? Are you mm -hmm. different now because of going through that experience? And after reflecting for a few seconds, most people are like, yeah, you know what? I, I, I learned that, you know, I have to answer my emails much quicker, or I got to be much more empathetic with my client, or I got to know how to ask better questions. There's always some kind of change that the main character goes through. And change is also a solution. So when we're talking about a solution in a story, it can be literal because you literally solve the problem or 
maybe you failed, but you learned something and you became better or you came out better on the other end. So the objective in the solution part of the story is just to show the change or the transformation that the main character of the story had because of what they went through. Does that make sense? That totally makes sense. Yeah. And, and it's funny because it reminds me of the hero's journey. Yeah. Uh, they go, uh, I, I like the, the hero's two journeys, right? So like one is a physical journey where they're traveling to uh, achieve a, a goal. But the other one is that emotional journey where they become a completely different person. Yeah. Uh, I'm reminded of like Lord of the Rings. Frodo's physical journey is to to get to, to Mordor and drop that ring off. But he, but he becomes a completely different person in the process. Um, in whether or not you even achieve the goal doesn't change the fact that you definitely necessarily change those scars are lessons that you wear forever. Exactly. So I'm 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 gonna pull back the curtains here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you a principle that I, I want to do it because I think it's gonna add a lot of value to really help you understand you know the, the the backbone of stories. But it'll it will also kind of burst your bubble whenever you watch a movie, a series, or or a book. Okay. All stories. Now they might have you know some might have a little bit different structure, but all stories ultimately. What they're trying to show or communicate is the transformation of or change of a character. Mm -hmm. That is what all stories throughout time have always been about. The transformation or change of a character. So you know when you're watching a movie, when you're reading a book, when you're watching a series, that at the end of this, there's going to be a change or transformation in the main character. That is the structure. Now, I've just shared with you three. I told you there was four. So there is a fourth one, and the fourth one's actually what makes all this process really strategic. But up to now, with just these three steps, if you apply them, if you understand the principles, you will you will be a much better storyteller. If you know that, you know, yeah. at the beginning, you have to have a context to create connection. Then there's got to be an obstacle to show vulnerability and, 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 and generate emotion. And then you have a solution to show the change or transformation of the main character. With that, you have a much better story than probably a lot of stories that we're telling that we're going, you know, through the, out of the, out of the door and the window and the branches and people kind of get lost when they're listening to our story. Okay. Now, what makes this whole process strategic? Cause I told you at the beginning, this is strategic storytelling is the fourth step. And the fourth step, the A is the application, mm. the application. What does the application mean? The application is now focused on the audience, right? The application is what is the message or the idea that I'm trying to communicate or convey to the audience through the story that I'm telling? Because what we have to understand, and this is another important brain tattoo or principle that I want you to remember, even though we're talking about storytelling, story is just the vehicle to communicate an idea or a message. The story is just the means to an end. The end is the message. The end is the idea that you want to communicate and that you know that if your audience can really grasp it, they can understand it, you know, logically and also feel it emotionally, you know it can generate change and transformation in them, right? So if the story is well structured, if the story is well told, and then in the application part, you're able to connect to that story, the purpose or the motive of why you're telling them the story, now even though you're sharing a message with them that they probably have heard before, they're receiving it almost as if it's something new. And what mm -hmm. we know through you know, brain studies is that when our brain perceives that it's receiving new information, it's much more likely to remember it. And that is why stories are up to 20 times more memorable than just sharing facts, just sharing numbers, just sharing data. And if we're able to tell a story and then connect to that story, the message or the idea that we wanna communicate, now we're also making our message or our idea up to 20 times more memorable. Because when people remember the story, they're going to remember also the message that we were able to connect and which meant the application that we wanted them to, to go through. So the objective, the purpose in the fourth stage is to generate change in the audience. So remember in the solution is to show the change of the main character, right? In the application, now our focus is how do we create change in our audience? Mm. And that is 
like I say in Spanish, la cosa más importante or the cosa, the most important cosa. Because every time you remember the word cosa, you're going to remember these four steps, right? The C is the context. The O is the obstacle. The S is the solution. And the A is the application. And what I just taught you is la cosa más importante or the most important thing so you can be a strategic storyteller. Dude, I know that we could probably go on for hours and go <laughs> deep dive into this stuff. But honestly, if you spend the last 25 minutes with us, ladies and gentlemen, you just learned something so valuable that you could be the cool guy at the campfire or you can be the best selling uh, whatever widget guy at your company because the story is going to be the connection that you make with the audience. It's going to give them the solution that you're looking for and help them apply what you've taught them. Steve, thank you very much for coming on the show today, man. If people want to reach out, they want to learn more about what you do, work with you directly, really get schooled on storytelling. How can they do that? Well, one way is they can go directly to the to the website, which is actually popping up here. But for people that are listening, it's www.cesarcastro.com. They can also find me on LinkedIn. I'm really active there on LinkedIn, always sharing content on LinkedIn. And just so you know, I have a podcast in Spanish and in English. In Spanish, it's called Storytelling Estratégico, which is strategic storytelling in Spanish. It's one of the most listened to podcasts in Latin America. Um, and in English, I just started an English podcast where uh, I think we're, we have five episodes up. So for the English uh, speaking and listening audience, go find the Strategic Storytelling Podcast, which is on you know all the podcast platforms. And you'll be able to learn. And every podcast or every episode, I share little tips. I share suggestions. I share applications. I tell stories. And then I'll, I'll, I'll show you how I created those because my goal, my objective, like I told you at the beginning, is to help people become great storytellers because I think that we can all be better leaders, better communicators, better entrepreneurs if we become better storytellers. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the ball game right there. CesarCastro.com, www.cesarcastro.com. Literally, go check out his podcast. What better way to learn storyteller? storytelling than from a storyteller. I mean, Cesar, thank you very much. This is jam-packed 30-minute conversation we just had. And uh, I learned that it only takes one thing, una cosa, and that's all you need to do to be a good <laughs> storyteller. So thank you very much for coming on the show. Ladies and gents, one more time, scrolling across the bottom, CesarCastro.com, CesarCastro.com. Cesar, thank you very much for being on the program today. Ladies and gentlemen, go out and tell your stories. We're out of here for today. Peace. See you next time. It's over. Go home. Is your business in need of marketing? Try starting a podcast. But not just any podcast. Podcast like a pro. We can show you how to take your business from being invisible to becoming a brand people trust. Go to www.businessbros.biz to get started today.